Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. That is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I pray, Father God, I ask humbly today that you use me to bring forth your word and spirit and the truth and with power. And I pray that it fall on good ground. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, I pray. Thank you. Thank you, Father Yah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak to me and use me. In your mighty name I pray. And I thank you. To you be all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Okay, so I just have a quick word for you on today. That we should ring it in my heart. If, when, when you get serious about how you are presenting yourself inside and out, because see, you are supposed to present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So when you get serious about your presentation, about you presenting yourself before God, and and for some of you, it's going to require you to present yourself before his creation because you got a call to do, you got a work to do and a purpose to fulfill. And it involves his people. And let me tell you, when you get serious about it, that's when they will take you seriously. But you got to get serious about it. Now, Today is a little teaching moment because I know that it's not only where I live. I know it's happening all over the world. But there are, because of the time we're living in and because of of, of society and, and, and uh, social media and, and the influence that it has on people because he you things come with a good influence and then there's a bad influence and and i'm talking about the bad people like to follow trends you know and some people if they see something long enough then They think, well, then that's the thing to do. And so we live in a day and age where people are presenting themselves. You know, what you do in your home is your business. If you like to walk around badly clothed in your home, that's your business. But when it comes to stepping outside of your door under God's creation, And, 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 and in front of his people. And not only his people, but the lost. People that's looking for their way. And you step out any kind of way. You wonder why people can't take you seriously. You wonder why that man that that you wish would propose to you can't take you seriously. You wondering why the husband that you've been praying for can't take you seriously, you know, hasn't come yet. And it's because the men that see you, they can't take you seriously. Because you got it all out. You got everything hanging out. There's nothing left to the imagination. So he thinking if he see it, ain't no telling who. And, and, the, and the other man walking by see it like, 
how they say she for the streets. Not only is she for the streets, she for the world. Might as well say, because everybody see it. Now, I know that we you have people saying, hey, it's my life, it's my body, you only live once. How does the world say, if you got in front, well, guess what? Flaunt it, the world is wrong. The world say, you know, for us to be in the world, but not of it. Supposed to move different. You're not supposed to look like the world. If the world got it all hanging out, that's not you. That doesn't include you. You wonder why you 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 sitting up and you got gifts in you. And some of you go to these churches, and, and you wonder why they don't want you involved. It's because they can't take you seriously. Look what you're walking up in now in. Your skirt is, is, is hiked up and, and tight. It's leaving nothing to the imagination. And the main thing about it is you being a hindrance to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. You being a hindrance. To the people that's seeking to know God more. You being a hindrance to the laws. Because they don't see no difference between you and them. They don't see a difference. So they think, well, why? Well, why, why, why should I get saved? They do the same thing I do. They look just like me. I don't see nothing different about them. And a lot of them... Go even as far to say that you're playing with God. You cause cause they don't see no fear of him in you. First Corinthians eight and thirteen says, If my brother is offended because I eat meat, then I will eat no meat. Nah. Yeah, you you could take that literally. But then we also know that the word it, it consists of parables too, cause yeah, sure he spoke in parables. So metaphorically speaking, we can take this word too. You know, like we supposed to eat on the word of God. How do you eat it? No, it don't mean that you actually bite the word and chew the papers in the cover of the book. No, it means to read it, to ingest it, to take it in. And so the things you wear and your nakedness that you expose cause others when they look upon you to take that image of you in. Which therefore means that they eat of it. It is a type of meat. Your image is a type of meat. Spiritually. Metaphorically. If what I do offends my brother, then I won't do it. If what I wear offends my brother or my sister, then I won't wear it. Because you got to learn on today that it's not always about you. It's not just about you. So, we got to work on this. Got to work on how you your presentation. Okay. 
we live in a time where, you know, physical fitness is hyped up more than any other time before, seems like, because a lot of people are, are doing it, not for the health reasons, but for vanity. They do it for likes. They do it so they can take a picture for the likes. They want, they, they get, their egos is fed. And, and this in their, so fragile in their thoughts that they have to post a picture. They work so hard and put in all their sweat, body aches and, and, and going without food and, and going the extra mile. To take a picture to post to get somebody else's approval. When they don't need nobody's approval but their own. When you're really doing it for you. But when you do it for you, then that's when health is involved. Yeah, you're doing it because you want to be better. You, you want to be your best self. Not because you're trying to best somebody else. You because you want to look better than such and so because you got more likes. Like, come on, that's vanity. First Timothy 4 and 8 says, bodily exercise profits little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. And it comes with a promise, y'all, that having the promise of the life that is that now is. And that which is to come. Because see, when you start realizing that it ain't just about you. Oh, that's when you get the promise. That's when you start walking and it come with the promise. Because now you're not walking in offense. Because you're thinking about others instead of yourself. And not just yourself. You think they gonna have booty shorts and days of dukes in heaven? I know gone and say God don't look at the outside, he look at the heart. Okay. All right. He also gave some statutes and commandments that said a woman ought to be modest in her appearance. Who said his word changed not. Everybody ought not be able to look upon your nakedness. Remember in the Old Testament when, who was it, uh, I want to say Abraham, uh, who was it? It was one of the old ancestor fathers, and he had been drinking, and he fell asleep, and, and his nakedness was shown, which means his body was shown, you know? Back then, they didn't wear pants. They wore them robes. So, so probably his robe was up. You know? So you, his body was exposed. And it says that when some of his sons came in, some of them laughed. They laughed when they seen him naked like that, passed out with his, with his gown up. Now, he sleep. He don't know no better because he's drunk. But then they say some of his sons came in. When they saw him, they turned their backs. Not to see their father naked. Out of respect. And, 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 and walked backwards to the bed and, and covered him up. And you know the one who laughed at his nakedness? The ones who looked got in trouble for it. Go read it. So it's, it's a respect thing. Not to look upon the nakedness of people. Y'all not want to look upon the nakedness of people. It's people not struggling with spirits of demonic spirits of lust and, and, and pornography. 
that's that wanting to be free, that's praying to be free of that, because it got a grips on them, male and female. And so, you know, they doing everything they can behind closed doors, not to give in to it. And, and, and knowing, you know, they can control what go on on the inside. Hey, I don't have to have these apps on my phone. I don't have to. I can block this, you know. I don't have to accept that, that person. I could delete and block. You know, I don't have to watch this on TV. I don't have to hear, listen to this kind of music. So they can contain it on the inside, in the house. But child, when they walk outside, look what they have to contend with. You. Walking around here with shorts so short on, they look like underwear. Your butt cheeks hanging out the bottom. They got to see you walking around with T-shirts two sizes too small and no bra on. They got to see you shopping in the grocery store in your pajamas. Looking like you got straight up out the bed. Lord forbid. I, I even have seen this some shopping. In the in the shorts so short. If you got on shorts, I don't know, because I didn't look under there to see. But it looked like all he had on was a shirt. A t shirt. Giving the image that all you have on is a t-shirt and panties and, and, and I'm giving you that because I'm hoping it to have panties on. But but looking pure naked. And these poor brothers and sisters that's struggling to be free of demons. You make it harder. Because of your selfish acts. Because of your selfish actions. Hey, if you want to walk around in your house like that, that's fine. But why do the people of God, the people of the Most High, why do we have to look on your nakedness? I don't want to see it. You say, well, don't look. Okay, I don't go around looking for it. But sometimes you just can't help but see, but to see when it's there. Like you walk in a store and the person in line in front of you is, is, is naked. Or the person walking toward you is exposed. Like, I actually do turn my head. I actually will look away. I say a little prayer on the inside because I need you to know something. That when you do this, you will be held accountable. You will be held accountable. Because what you're not taking in when I say is is more than, it's about more than just you. See, you don't know that some of these men you walking by in them little booty charts and, and, and them little halter tops that look like bras with all your midriff exposed and, and no brown and, and, you know, just barely anything on. Some of these men is praying to God, crying out to him on the daily to, to deliver them. Some of these men are married with these demons and, and wanting their marriage and want to, to love their wives and, 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 and be a man of God. And they, but they got to struggle because they step out the house with their wife and then here come the naked woman walking by. 
You come to sister in church with the tight dress on with short, showing everything. Want to sit at the front. Want to go up to the front of the church. Then want to be bent all over. Like she got to pick up fans. and she, she got to pick up this and that. She got to bend down and talk to mother at the front of the, the church. Because she thinking it's all about her. But you're wrong. Uh-uh. I'm teaching and I'm rebuking and I'm doing it out of love. I want you to see that it's more than about just you. It's not just about you. You know, to that single sister who 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 wants a man. But you're not realizing that the way you portraying yourself, <laughs> ain't no telling what kind of man you going to end up with. But I guarantee you this, it won't be a godly one. Because ain't no godly man going to settle for that. No godly man ain't going to want to marry that and wife that. Let me tell you something. Charm is deceptive and beauty is vain. Beauty is fleeting, which means it's just for a moment. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That's Proverbs 31 and 30. Charm is deceptive. See, you got to watch them flattering tongues. Everybody who's Skin and grin, smile in your face ain't really for you. And and don't let them say all the right things and flatter you and, and look good. Because, you know, like today, ain't no telling. Because a lot of it ain't real. A lot of, of that body that they got exposed and uncovered ain't even real. It's a, it's an illusion. It's an optical illusion. <laughs> because the butt is fake. Sometimes the breast and the butt is fake. A lot of the times the hair is fake. The eyelash is fake. The fingernails is fake. The big toenails is fake. And, and what's on the teeth is fake. And then they take a picture of all the fakeness. And then they put a filter on top of the fakeness. So now you got filtered fakeness. And then, you know, you don't know what to believe. Because, <laughs> so you stuck believing a lie. You just, <sighs> mm, mm, mm. accepting what ain't real. You know, you're settling for what's presented to you. And a lot of you don't know that some of these people walking with you, knowing in their mind, they thinking, why did she do that to herself? Why did he do that? That's fake. That ain't him. Why is he trying to look like something that he ain't? Some of these people make fun of you behind your back. Some of these people is laughing at you. And you don't even realize it. When you get serious about yourself and the way that you present yourself, then other people will begin to be serious about you. So 
So let's do better so we can be better. Let's stop leaving the house looking like we just got out the bed and don't care. Looking like we don't care. But then if somebody stop, if you hear somebody saying they love God, well, you love God. Where you love God? He said, be ye holy because I'm holy. Holy people don't have no business walking around naked. A holy person gonna clothe you. A holy person gonna tell you the truth. And do it with love. So. Let's just do better. Winter time is coming. It's time to put some clothes on. You know, and, and it's sad because even in the winter time, I, I can't understand it. That's when you know that spirit got a hold to him. Because I see some with, with jackets on, with hoodies on, and scarves. But they have on their booty shorts. They have on the days they do. All your leg, all the bottom half of your body is exposed. With, with flip-flops. Because you want the world to see that you got your toes done. And you got your fake toe. Your fake toenails. But from the waist up, you wrap like it's 30 degrees below zero. And in three bundles a half, sometimes six. The weave is thick. So you covered <laughs> from, from waist up. But from waist down, come on, come on. Let's just finish getting dressed. All right. I love you. God loves you. And when you get serious about yourself, then others will begin to be serious about you. They can't take you serious when you don't look like you serious. When you don't even look like you take your own self seriously. You you leaving out the house, you still got your bonnet on. You they wondering, you know, some people look at you and wonder, well, did she forget she had a bonnet on? Did she forget to comb my hair this morning? That man that's looking for a wife is wondering that. And some of them is like, oh no, uh-uh. Cause that's one thing I'm not gonna have is a wife that don't comb my hair. I don't want my boys looking at me saying, man, you got this woman on and comb my hair. Why is her hair cut? What do it look like up under there? So let's do better. All right. Till next time. Bye.